Hello everyone, my name is Isra. Today I'll be your host for episode 3 of our Dallas Film School student podcast. Today joining me will be our special guests, Nime and Ashrita. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Sure. My name is Nime. I'm a first generation British Indian director and I've been at Dallas Film School for about two years alongside the acting program. So I started out as an actor, then moved into filmmaking, and now I like acting, directing, and writing often in the same projects. Um, my name is Ashrita. I've also been coming to DFS for almost a year now, and I'm a first-generation American filmmaker, aspiring to be, and um, I really enjoy and love cinematography, and I hope to go down that path. That's wonderful. Since today's topic is South Asian, the South Asian experience, uh, I would like to start off strong with some representation in Hollywood that we see from South Asians and negative, positive, all sorts of things like that. So what are some things that you guys have noticed growing up and experiencing that? Oh, wow. <laughs> can I go first? Uh, you, can, you can go. Um, I, well, of course, there are the characters that when when <laughs> when you're like American mm-hmm. Indians or like not American Indian but like Indians right or South Asians when they are casted in a role it's usually stereotypical mm-hmm. um, in a way that like you know the accents the wardrobe and kind of the hobbies um, and that reflects onto like normal not normal but you know like real life everyday real life experiences yeah. like classic example is Ravi from Jesse like yeah. definitely and then I'm sure every little brown boy <laughs> has been called Ravi before yeah. in or one way but that's like a very simple kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah and to add on to that it's like you have characters such as Raj from The Big Bang Theory mm-hmm. and um, Dopinder from Deadpool. And they're these very stereotypical characters where, like, for example, Dopinder is um, a cab driver and we're often put into roles such as that or, like, uh, you know, owning a supermarket or something like yeah. Apple from The Gas Simpsons. Station. Gas stations. Yeah, yeah, 7-Elevens. Gas stations is a classic one. <laughs> uh, so that's generally, like those stereotypes tend to be seen a lot in Western media and we've gotten to the point where it becomes a little old and we need to start being seen as something more than that. Yeah, um, I since we're on the topic of stereotypes, um, what are, like, what do you think has put us in the position of, like, feeling the need to conform within those stereotypes or like so for example you we mentioned or for example would be Mindy Kaling for example like her role in the office her production of never have I ever and like when you see stuff like that how do you feel like number one you're seeing you know South Asian representation number one that that's a big thing right but right. within that like besides the good feeling of of like seeing someone of a similar race of you or similar practices as you how do you feel when it's kind of all just ruined by the fact that all they're playing is a stereotype? Yeah, often. I mean, oh, go ahead. <laughs> you're, yeah, I mean, you're just put back into that box. Like, obviously, I mean, you just mentioned, like, um, like we love to see it. Like, mm-hmm. we love to see um, those faces and, like, that diversity. But then when you're put into a role that's, like, sort of a box, you're not really... and especially with Mindy Kaling it's Mm -hmm. like interesting to see because The Office a great show relatively and um like she was like the only character right and then we all she and she was a good character Mm -hmm. but then with her production for Never Have I Ever like yeah (laughs) it was iffy (laughs) it was unfortunate I mean like although those things like or aspects are like true they're not like regular yeah really the and the concept was there Mm -hmm. but that not necessarily even like execution but that development yeah i don't think translated well even like 
kind of attempting to break the stereotype by being an insufferable character and and that point the point that's the point itself is to like put the stereotype away Mm -hmm. but like and but it is again a whole thing where you want to like show that there is the culture there is the like identity but you're putting yourself back into a different box that yeah, isn't much better yeah than it classic, isn't much better yeah. like there need it's like sprinkles yeah you, know? yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to sprinkle it in like we're getting fed crumbs essentially right. yeah often yeah. we'll see like um indian filmmakers perpetuating mm-hmm. what um hollywood has like the standards that hollywood has mm-hmm. set and then sometimes even more so in an attempt to break them and uh, obviously never have i ever as we've said is yeah. a pretty good example of that because you see like sure it's supposed to be Mm -hmm. the life of your average um indian growing up in america and experiencing american things Mm -hmm. uh as well as how those conflicts with her family and heritage can impact those decisions Mm -hmm. but the way that it's presented tends to uh, enhance that stereotype like for example the accents i don't think i've ever heard any um indian even living in America, <laughs> speak with any of the accents yeah. that they've had. Yeah. And, you know, India is a very diverse place. We have thousands exactly. of accents and languages and religions. None yeah. of them yeah. have been seen in media. Properly represented. Yes. Yeah. Um, on the topic of proper representation, I think we can get into, you know, uh, some things that have made us feel good about, you know, ourselves, our culture, our religion, stuff like that. So, what are some movies slash actors or producers that you guys think have they you know, Patel. Dave yep. Patel, Dave Patel, definitely. Through and through, yeah. Yeah. He's um, he's a big yeah. like role model for me. Yeah, for sure. And seeing things like Monkey Man mm-hmm. that definitely made me proud of being an Indian. For sure. Yeah. And it's interesting to see how it's also commentary on India itself mm-hmm. and even more so the political state yeah. there. To the point where it actually ended up getting banned in India, which... Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. It, it did, and it wasn't allowed to be shown in theaters there oh. because it criticized a particular political party. Yeah. Uh, um, sort of indirectly, though. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's interesting to see someone from the place where we came from taking all these bold steps yeah. and still appealing to audiences and making entertainment, but the right way. I think what he's shown us that is art is always political and it's just the way that you relay it and the fact that he did it for our community and like in honor of our community has really given me a special spot for him and everything he's done even Slumdog Millionaire like there are certain critiques that I could give it like okay like maybe there are a lot of stereotypes that were played into right but like even like the political like the the narration the political narration within that movie is still relevant to to today and i think that when producers and actors like start to realize that like everything they make is commentary on something that's happening today and south asia more than ever like now more than ever needs like that exposure to especially in america i would say yeah yeah we essentially need that like mirror held up to the world exactly yeah not even to mention like he and like going back to like kind Mm -hmm. of mindy kaling like he came from like stereotypical roles and to break out of that Mm -hmm. like from an actor to become a filmmaker is like one thing but like to come out of this like stereotypical um kind of identity and Mm -hmm. to like bring it into his own filmmaking is like what we should all like look to admire and learn from yeah like, definitely that's the way yeah. like he took the step that we all need to take yes. and he's made it i would say he's made it easier for younger or aspiring south asian filmmakers to get straight to it like we don't need to conform to things the way that we think we may need to you know like play soft or anything like that like if there's something that needs to be said which there always is like we need to say it, we need to relay it and yeah he's made it so inspirational for us it's so. about giving us a voice you know yeah shout out dev patel, shout out sure. dev patel. Um, and another yeah. movie that um i'd also like to mention is um bend it like beckham yes i just had the pleasure of recently watching that long overdue watch but it's a very relatable experience as a lot of us have uh, experienced the struggle with dealing with more traditional Mm -hmm. Indian parents and, you know, chasing our dreams, Mm -hmm. like for, um, 
the main character in Bend It Like Beckham, it was football. And for us, obviously, it was filmmaking. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Like, even Never Have... That's what Never Have I Ever Needed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you ne- of course, like, we talk about these stereotypes, like, but that context is needed. That culture identity is needed. Mm-hmm. But with Bend It Like Beckham, like, you're taking that and you're evolving it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's not, again, this box that I'm... Like, we keep seeing. Yeah, because, like like at the end of the day like it's always an empty canvas it's just it's just what you put on it and like with the main characters who never have ever like they needed they needed more love and more nurture from like whoever you know decided this is what they wanted and with bend it like beckham is like there were layers to this character there was layers to her family there's layers to her culture and it was shown in such a respectful way i think like and it was like in the 2000s like at that point like yeah you know it's hard to like you it's not always easy to like have like a deferring view from what you know everyone else thinks but even just like the girl wanting to be a football soccer player what yeah and and her parents completely being opposed to it and just her fighting for what she wanted and ultimately like getting it and like as a filmmaker as a first generation filmmaker which all three of us have in common is like we need to fight for like our representation and we need to actually like create it i agree yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. a lot of it stems from like even like putting your foot out there to like Mm -hmm. do it you know and like with bennett like beckham for example like you're kind of even not only going against kind of like society Mm -hmm. like stance but like your parents your parents values Mm -hmm. your culture's values like we wouldn't necessarily like go into that like with a wholeheartedly you know and with filmmaking we are and that's how that's the only way we can yeah putting our foot in the door um what would you say is your experience as like you know a south asian kid you know kind of fighting this certain norm within south asian culture and family and how do you think like what what did you do like what did you compromise you know yeah i think um in my case i had to have all these long conversations Mm -hmm. arguments with my family about future and like you start to realize okay they do have a point Mm -hmm. in terms of they definitely want us to be financially secure in the future and that's why we might not like they might not want us to go towards art and filmmaking and the such but um at the same time it's yeah it's from a place of almost fear that okay what if we end up hungry on the streets and stuff uh though uh the lack of like if people follow the idea that okay let's just not become filmmakers let's not um make statements because we want to pursue like a a more comfortable life yeah it leads to you know the lack of people that we have in the industry right now and that perpetuates the whole idea of okay there are less people in the industry meaning that um, people of South Asian descent are still going to keep being treated exactly. a certain way yeah. until there are enough people to like have that big of a voice and exactly. say that no we we're just like everyone else mm-hmm. and we don't need to be put into these stereotypes and you know we deserve good roles too yeah shift the mindset exactly even Definitely. that lack of like people in the industry is mm-hmm. what holds people back like exactly. I had to like you point out like for example with our parents like oh well if he can do it I can do it you know Mm -hmm. but there's like kind of barely any you know yeah and so where where do you go and it's like everyone kind of holding each other back I feel like um and for me yeah it's like the long conversations the the film industry like even like there's that financial aspect but even like moral aspects yeah exactly being a woman like being a man in the industry like you know and that I would say like my biggest regret from now is that not starting like sooner like exactly. trying here. Like, yeah. trying all it is is just like trying to at exactly. least like just the effort putting yourself out there proving to your parents um also I would say just like like you said like the like the the roles that you have to play within the industry like like how far are you gonna go like yes and how far do we actually need to go stuff like that and yeah we need trailblazers in order to Mm -hmm. to like point out to our parents or point out to people like people who are taking care of us like hey like this person's in this position i can get there i could 
you know be doing what this person's doing do it better and yeah. um yeah it's all about mindset and sometimes with parents it's like you have to like sit down and be the adult of the conversation and be like hey like this is what i'm doing like i of course it comes from love with them right it's like like we want you to to be as successful as possible and we don't see success being within here but if you're able to like it's just conversation and conversations need to be held about us pursuing these careers and representing ourselves and with audiences like it's always the main thing is communication i would say right sometimes i think it's like convincing them that we're trying to serve a purpose greater than ourselves and you know be a voice for everyone around us Mm -hmm. everyone who looks like us and has the same color skin exactly it's very much a group effort i feel like in the long run yeah i would say Mm -hmm. so too um thank you so much for everything uh i definitely had an insightful conversation and i hope you guys learned a little something from this too um and that's it